together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever.
family continue to be safe. It is my prayer that God Almighty will be a shield for you, will be a shield for your family, and will continue to provide and perfect you all in Jesus' name. It is always a pleasure uh, to gather together on a day like this at the feet of the Lord to learn his word and to draw strength from his presence. So wherever you are today, it's my prayer that the word of God will locate you and it will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. Amen. So please remember to take a photograph of yourself and of your family and send to us on the WhatsApp number that is on the screen. Those photographs are mighty in the hands of the Lord. The photographs are not for you. Jesus will take those photographs and use it to encourage other people who have become cold in the Lord. So please, just allow Jesus to use you. Take those photographs and send them to us. You might just be saving the spiritual life of somebody. And as you do so, uh, I pray that God will honor your obedience and God will bless you even more than your expectations in Jesus' name. Amen. And please remember uh, not to come into the presence of God empty-handed. 
we noticed, at least I noticed, that as people uh, watch the service online, they immediately start signing off after the sermon. They don't even wait for the offering. They don't wait for the tithe. They don't wait for the closing prayers. Immediately the sermon is over, many people start signing off. Be careful, be careful not to hurry out of the presence of God. If God is still at the service, don't leave before the service is declared closed. And for those of you who will normally even sign off before you get to the tithes and offering, the account numbers are on the screen uh, for the tithes, for the offering. Don't come empty-handed before the Lord. Even though you are attending church at home, be sure that you don't attend empty-handed. Send your tithe, send your offering through your bank transfers. If you don't have a bank transfer, look for somebody who has bank transfer facility on their phone. Give the money to them and ask them to transfer it on your behalf. There is no reason whatsoever for you to deny yourself the blessings of tithe and of offering. A word they say is enough for, for the wise. Some people will think, ah, oh, they are escaping paying tithe, they are escaping paying offering. No, you are escaping blessing. I pray that God himself will speak to you in Jesus' name. Amen. And please remember, throughout the service, uh, pay maximum attention. Avoid any kind of distractions. Pay attention to every Bible passage that is mentioned. Write it down. And then listen for your word. When you hear your own word from the Lord, you will know without any doubt that this is you that God is talking to. Write it down and turn it into prayers. I join my faith with yours. That every prayer you pray today, may God Almighty turn into a great testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. If you can find somewhere to rise, just lift up your Bible as we take the affirmation together. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, eternal seed of the word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same again. Never, never, never. I will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Amen. Please open with me to Psalm 23 and I'll read verse 5. Psalm 23, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. I believe that the Lord would have us continue in the series we started several weeks ago. The Lord is my shepherd. Today we'll go to part nine, and part nine is titled In the Presence of My Enemies. May God Almighty bless you as you listen in Jesus' name. Let us take this worship song. If you can find a place to kneel down or lie down, go ahead and give God some quality, quality worship. God bless you.
Just go ahead and bless the name of the Lord in your own words. Just go ahead and begin to bless the name of the Lord. Say, Father, you are holy. You are mighty. You are excellent. You are glorious. There is none like you. There will never be any like you. You are the King of glory. The Lord of hosts. The one that dwells in Shekinah glory. You speak and the whole heart trembles. Father, we give you worship. We bless you, O oh God. We invite you, Lord, into our midst today. Speak, O oh God, and give us the grace to receive. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. God bless you. I pray for you one more time. Whatever may be the need in your life today. May God Almighty supply to you abundantly in Jesus' name. You are believing God for strength, receive strength. You are beginning believing God for hope, receive hope. You are believing God for a new job. Even as you abide in his presence this time, this day, may God make a way for you where there seems to be no way in Jesus' name. It's possible you are in sorrow, you are in pain. But I pray that even as you abide today under the word of the Lord, may God replace your pain and your sorrow with joy. It is well with you. And in case you are struggling with barrenness in one area of your life, I decree upon your life today, barrenness has come to an end. Surplus and abundance are your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. The Lord is my shepherd, part nine. Untitled, in the presence of my enemies. As I was getting ready for this ministration, I believe the Holy Spirit put some questions in my mouth or in my heart. And that's what I want to start this word with. Why will God bless you in the presence of your enemies? And there are other options that God can take. Number one, why can't God just kill the enemies? As some people pray, let them just fall down and die. That's an option. Why does God want to bless you in the presence of your enemies? Can't God just kill them? Make them to fall down and die? If that option is not good enough, can't God just take them away from you? 
Rather than you having to deal with these enemies, can't can God take the other option of taking them away from you? So that you won't have to deal with them. And then there's another option. God can take you away from them. Just separate you from them. But why did God decide that in this case, he will bless you in the presence of your enemies? I don't know who you are listening to this word, but I join my faith with yours. And I pronounce the word of God upon your life. In the presence of your enemies, God Almighty will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. There are some answers to the question. Number one, why would God bless you in the presence of your enemies? Number one, to show that God has the final say. To show that God has the final say. Because when they are not there to witness it, they may not understand that their opposition will not make a difference. So God will decide to bless you in their presence. Those who are opposing you. Those who are trying to block your progress. Those who are trying to block your destiny. God will keep them alive to witness that their opposition can achieve nothing. I prophesy upon your life. Everyone that stands in the place of enemy concerning you, they shall be neutralized in Jesus' name. First Samuel chapter 16, when you study verse 10 to 13, you will discover that Jesus, I mean that David, God blessed him in the presence of his enemies. Like I said last week, his father did not call him to the to the ordination service. They wanted to anoint one of his children as king. His father did not even invite him. His brother did not say that we are not complete. But God made sure. He made sure that the father, the brothers were there when eventually David was anointed king over Israel. To show that he alone has the final say. I pray for you one more time. Your enemies will not have the final say over you. Your friends will not have the final say over you. Even your relatives will not have the final say over you. And God put some things in my heart. He said, even your past will not have the final say over you. I don't know who you are. But you are worried that what has happened in the past will affect your future. God asked me to tell you, even your past will not have the final say in the mighty name of Jesus. And then he said also to me, to announce to you, that even your present will not have the final say over your future. I don't know what you are going through, my brother, my sister, but this is the word of God to you. Your past will not have the final say. Your present will not have the final say. Your enemies will not have the final say. Even your friends and your relatives will not have the final say. God alone will decide your future. Rise on your feet and say, Lord, I believe your word. No one else will have the final say over me. Not my enemies, not my family, not my past, not my present, you alone, Father, will have the final say in my life. Go ahead and declare. You alone, God, will have the final say in my life. Not what I am going through right now. Not what I've been through in my life. But you alone, oh God, will have the final say upon my life. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Just in case you are one of those people. You are afraid your past may affect your future. You are afraid your present may affect your future. Just lift up your hand wherever you are. Father, I just want to commit your sons and your daughters into your hands. Even as you have spoken concerning them, so let it be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, 
we are prayed. When you also study Revelation chapter 3, verse 7, let's open to it. Revelation chapter 3, verse 7. You will understand why God will decide to bless you in the presence of your enemies. The passage says, when God opens a door, no one can shut. And when God closes a door, no one can open. That is why it will allow them to do everything they want to do and they will discover they cannot change what God has decided to do in your life. I pray for you. The blessing that God has prepared for you and your family, no one will be able to prevent it in the mighty name of Jesus. And every evil that God has shut, every door of sorrow that the almighty God has decided to bring to an end, nobody will be able to bring it up again in Jesus' name. Amen. Number two, why will God decide to bless you in the presence of your enemies? To humble them. God will bless you to humble your enemies. He will bless you in their presence. Huh? You will see what, what the Lord laid in my heart. He says, he decided to bless some of his people in the presence of their enemies so that he can humble the enemies. I don't know who it is that is trying to hurt your progress. Working hard to prevent your promotion. To prevent your joy. God will humble them in Jesus' name. In 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 11. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 11. When you open to it, you see the, what David was talking about. David was actually describing his experience. When he wrote Psalm 23, verse 5, he was describing his experience. The Bible said, Samuel told the father of David, are these all your children? And the father said, ah, there is still one, the youngest one, is taking care of the sheep. Ah. And Samuel said, ah, send for him. We will not sit down until, do you know the meaning of that? <laughs> That boy that you say is young, is taking care of the sheep, every one of you will give him a standing ovation. You will remain standing until that boy comes. If it takes one hour, you will be standing. If it takes three hours, you will be on your feet. If it takes 12 hours before that small boy comes, you will still be standing. I prophesy upon your life. Your enemies will give you a standing ovation. I say it one more time. Your enemies will give you a standing ovation. You can imagine what they felt like, the father and the elder brothers. Say, why are we standing? Can't we at least sit down? Say, no, you can't sit down. Because until that boy comes, nobody is sitting down. God humbled them. He humbled them. I prophesy one more time upon your life. God will humble your enemies in Jesus' name. And then as he came, see what happened. As he came, the Bible said in verse 13. Let's open to verse 13. <laughs> he opened to verse 13. Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brethren. He didn't tell his brothers to go to the room. He didn't tell them that, okay, it's not you I came for. He said, no, stay. And watch me anoint David in the midst of his brethren. So when David was writing Psalm 23 verse 5, he was describing his experience. That all those who opposed him, God kept them to witness his promotion. I pray for you one more time. In the midst of your enemies, God will perfect everything that concerns you in Jesus' name. A song came to my heart as I was preparing the message. I believe that song is for you. For those who love football, you know, once the, old, once the winner is, is decided, on the day they are going to crown them, the final match, when the winner is coming, they usually take a song, stand up, stand up for the champion, stand up. I prophesy upon your life. They will soon sing that song for you. 
I say it one more time. They will still sing that song for you. When you show up, they will sing that the champion has arrived. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. When you think about what it takes to be in the presence of a king, I can all imagine that the moment Samuel anointed David, that very moment, David became a king in the sight of all those that were there. Before the oil, David was their younger brother. But after the oil, David was the king. And when you are in the presence of the king, what do you do? You salute and bow. I can imagine the father bowing down and saluting his son. All the brothers that wanted to take his place, bowing down and giving him a salute. I decree upon your life. All those who have been trying to walk against your destiny, every one of them will give you a salute in Jesus' name. I declare every one of them will bow unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's look at another example. When God blesses you in the presence of your enemies so that he can humble, he can humble you. Exodus chapter 12, verse 31 to 32. Exodus 12, verse 31 to 32. You will see the story. If you open to it, you will see the story of Pharaoh. Pharaoh that punished Israel for years and years and years. Israel served as servants unto the Egyptians. The Egyptians were the lords. The Israelites were the servants. But one day God decided to bless the servants in the presence of those that were acting as the lords. The Bible said, Pharaoh brought, asked them to call Moses and Aaron. And when you get to verse 32, he said unto them, Ah, Moses, before you go, verse 32, before you go, bless me too. You can imagine Pharaoh kneeling down <laughs> in front of Moses. The king of, Israel, of Egypt kneeling down and saying, Moses, please bless me. Power change hands. The king has been humbled before the beloved of the Lord. Please rise on your feet and cry to God. Say, Father, all those who have been my enemies, humble them before me in Jesus' name. Cry to God. If somebody told Moses that the king of the land will bow before him and ask for prayer, he would not believe. But there is a God in heaven that will bless you to the point in the presence of your enemies that your enemies will be humbled. Cry to God. All those who have been my enemies, who have been trying to frustrate me, Lord, humble them. Humble them. Let them bow unto me for your glory. Go ahead and cry to God. Pharaoh, bow down to Moses. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. One more example before we move on. Genesis chapter 50, verse 18. This is the story of Joseph. You remember what they did to him, his brothers. They threw him inside the pit. They sold him into slavery. But when you get to Genesis chapter 50, verse 18, the brothers started to beg Joseph, why don't you make us your servant, Joseph? The elder brothers were begging the younger one to make them his servants. God could have decided to bless Joseph in the absence of his enemies. God could have decided to kill those people that, that, that maltreated Joseph. But he said, no, I will keep them alive so that I can humble them. And God did exactly that. I don't know who you are 
you have gone through stress. You have gone through sorrow. You have gone through pain in your life. The people you love have disappointed you. The people you trusted have betrayed you. You are wondering, how can life be this hard? How can people be this bad? Don't worry, God is setting you up. Those same people, those same people that you trusted that betrayed you, God Almighty will bring them back to see his power upon your life in Jesus' name. And when they come back, they shall bow at your feet in the mighty name of Jesus. Number three, reasons why God will decide to bless you in the presence of your enemies. To make the victory exceedingly sweet. To make the victory exceedingly sweet. Because when God, if God were to kill your enemies, the victory won't be that sweet. If God were to separate your enemies from you, they would not witness your joy, so the victory will not be that sweet. If God were to separate you from them, the victory will not be that sweet. But when God decides to bless you in the presence of your enemies, it's always a sweet victory. You are there saying, maybe you have been saying this, but the Lord just laid it in my heart now. Oh God, just take this person away from me. Oh God, just take me away from this environment. Just take no. God is saying, don't worry. I will bless you right where you are. And everyone will see my power upon your life. I decree upon you. Just as God has spoken, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Let's look at the sweet victory. Daniel chapter 3, verse 28. The Bible said there was a king, Nebuchadnezzar. He said they should put some boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, in the burning fire. He was so angry with these Hebrew boys. He said, not only am I going to kill you, I'm going to make it a painful death. <laughs> All those that want to bring pain into your life, we, God will disappoint them. He threw them into the fire only for him to discover that God can bless in the fire. I pray for you. It may feel like you are going through fire. But in the mighty name of Jesus, even in that fire, God will bless you beyond your expectation in Jesus' name. There are many people that are praying for a quick return to what things used to be before COVID-19. That is good. Father, return us to what it used to be before COVID-19. But you can also pray that even during this coronavirus, show your power in my life. Because even in the midst of the coronavirus, God can still do wonders. God decided to bless them in the fire, inside the fire. I prophesy upon your life. Whatever may be your condition today, the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego we bless you abundantly even where you are in Jesus' name. Sweet victory. God could have killed Nebuchadnezzar. But he decided, no, I'm not going to kill this wicked man. I'm going to bless my people in his presence. Three things happened when God blessed those Hebrew boys. Daniel chapter 3 verse 28. He said their enemies decided to share the testimony on their behalf. You know, one thing is God blesses you and then you come and share the testimony. But God can bless you so much that your enemies will go, be the one that will go and share the testimony. The people who don't want you to be blessed will be the people that will go and share the testimony of what God has done in your life. Turn to it and see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not have to say anything. But see the king giving testimony. Blessed be the God of Shadrach, 
Meshach and Abednego who sent his angels. He delivered his servant that trusted in him. What is the king doing? The king is giving, is giving a testimony of the people that he wanted to kill. Rise on your feet and say, Papa, those who are opposing me today, let them be the one that will go and share the testimony of your blessing upon my life. Cry to God. King Nebuchadnezzar began to give the testimony. Nobody asked him. Nobody sent him. But when he saw the power of God, he began to, to, to give testimony. Father, those who do not want me to move forward in life, keep them alive so that when they see your power upon my life, they will be the one to share the testimony of your power. Cry to God. The wicked king started to share the testimony of the Hebrew boys. Don't pray that God will kill your enemies. Pray that God will keep them alive so that they will help you to share the testimony themselves. He began to declare, see, God saved his people. He did not allow the, 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 the fire to touch them. He began to share the testimony. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. I join my faith with yours. By the time God is true blessing you, even those who are opposed to you will be there to come and share the testimony in Jesus' name. The second thing that happened in this case, not only did the enemy share the testimony, God made the enemy to become a bodyguard. The king that wanted to kill them became their bodyguard. Is that not a sweet victory? The person that wanted to kill you, then God turned that person to be your bodyguard. When you look at verse 29, verse 29, King Nebuchadnezzar began to speak. He said, anybody, anybody that tries to come near these boys, Anybody that says any battle against these people, I will kill. I will bring down their father's house. What happened? He saw the power of God, and the king said, okay, I will be the bodyguard of these people. I prophesy upon your life. The same people that want to hurt you, God will use them to defend you. I say this one more time. The same people that want to bring you down, God will use them to defend you. And the final one, I'll make this sweet, to make it a very sweet victory. Not only did the enemy begin to share testimony concerning the people he wanted to kill, not only did he become their bodyguard, he became a stepping stone to the next level in their life. Verse 30 said, the king said, ah, I, I, I will also promote you. He promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The enemy promoted the, the people. If God had killed Nebuchadnezzar, who would promote Nebuchadnezzar? Is it the soldiers that will promote them? You are hearing this message. Maybe you have been praying for God to kill your enemy. Maybe you have been praying for God to take you away from these people or this person that has been a pain to your life. You may want to consider changing your prayer. Because that enemy may be the one God will use to take you to your next level. That person you don't like, that person you don't want, may be the one God will use to take you to your next level. Change your prayer. Change your prayer. And say, Father, everyone that is working against me right now, everyone that is making my life hard, use them as stepping stone to my next level. Cry to God. It is a sweet victory when your enemy becomes your horse. When your enemy becomes your horse and they are the one God is using to carry you, to carry you to the next level of glory, that is a sweet victory. Cry to God, turn my enemies into my horse. Turn my enemies into a stepping stone. Don't kill them, Lord. Don't kill them, but use them for my glory. Use my enemies for my glory. Cry to God, brother. 
Cry to God, sister. That person that has been a pain, Lord, use him for my glory. Use her for my glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Action point. I dis decided, I'm sure it's the work of the Holy Spirit. I said, starting from today, let me just be adding action point. You know, I said it some time ago that I will stop giving you action point. That you should write it yourself. When you listen to the sermon, bring out the action point yourself. But somehow the Holy Spirit prevailed on me to at least list some action points that you can do as a result of this sermon. Number one, action point number one. Abide in God's presence. Abide in his presence. You see, one of the reasons why God decided to bless David in the presence of the enemies of David was because David loved the presence of God. When you study Psalm 27 verse 4, he said the only thing, only one thing I want, Lord, I just want to abide in your presence forever. That's David talking. He said, Lord, I just want to be in your presence all the days of my life. When you enjoy the presence of God, when you abide in his presence, you're studying the Bible, you're listening to someone, you are busy at his work, you are busy working for him, you are perpetually in his presence. He will bless your enemies in the presence of your, in, in their presence. Number two, flee from sin. Flee from sin. You had this testimony of Joseph. The people that threw him into the pit. The people that sold him into slavery. We are the same people that said unto him, make us your servant. But you forgot. Or some may forget that Joseph did not get to that point until he conquered temptation. In, some, in, in, in Genesis, I think Genesis 39, not some, Genesis 39, verse 9, Joseph was invited into adultery. They invited him. He didn't invite himself. They invite, the, the, the wife of his, of, of his boss invited him to the bed of adultery. And the Bible said, no, I will not do this wickedness and sin against God. That's why God was able to bless Joseph in the presence of his enemies, flee from sin. Action point number three. Hold on to God till the very end. Hold on to God till the very end. We talk about the blessing of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire. But we should not forget that they said to the king, King, if you want to kill us, kill us. But our mind is made up. We will serve no other God but the God of heaven and earth. They decided to hold on to God to the very, even to the point of death. Make a decision to hold on to God to the very end. That nothing will stop you from believing in the power of the Most High. They said to the, the king, our God can save us inside the fire. But even if he decides that he won't save us and we end up dying, that is okay, king. As far as we are concerned, whether we are alive or dead, we are still the Lord's. How many of you believe that? Whether you die or live, as a Christian, does it really make a difference? Does it really make a difference? That's what they were saying to the king. If you like, kill us. When you kill us, we will appear in the presence of our God, and we will continue our, our fellowship. Are you ready to wait on the Lord, to hold on to him the, to the very end? Number four, the final action point. Allow yourself to be used by God. Many of us want God to bless us, but we don't want to be used by God. Oh, become a worker for God. I don't have time for that. That means you don't have time for his blessing. 
Oh, do this for God. Do this for God. No, no, no. I, I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Ah, you don't have time for blessing. You, you had the testimony of Moses. Pharaoh bowed down to Moses. He said to Moses, please bless me. The king was begging Moses. But you forgot the action Moses took. God called Moses and said, Moses, I have an assignment for you. My people are suffering in the land of Egypt. I want to use you to set them free. That was one of the things that Moses did to qualify him for blessing in the presence of his enemies. Will you allow God to use you? Or you just want to use God? Majority of Christians, they just want to use God. Use God to get something. But they don't want to be used of God. Please rise on your feet as we take these prayer points. Prayer point number one. Father, help me to abide in your presence. Prayer point number two. I will flee from sin, Lord. I will flee. I will flee from sin. Prayer point number three. Lord, help me to hold on to you to the very end. Help me, Lord, to hold on to you to the very end. Number four. Lord, send me. I will go for you. Whatever you ask me to do, Lord, I will. Send me, I will go. And then the final prayer point. Father, just as you did for David, just as you did for Joseph, just as you did for Moses, bless me in the presence of my enemies. Go ahead and cry to God. We worship you, O oh God. Hold on to you to the very end. You have never failed, and you will never fail. 
Lord, send me, I will go. Use me for your glory. Use me for your, for your glory, Father. Use me for your glory. Wherever you send me, Lord, I will go. I offer myself unto you. Just as Moses offered himself, Lord. I offer myself unto you. I offer myself unto you. Use me, Lord, for your glory. Use me for your glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Please lift up your hand wherever you are. Just lift up your hand. I pray for you that God Almighty, the God that blesses in the presence of enemies, we give you the grace to abide in his presence forever in Jesus' name. Just as David loved the presence of God, just as David loved to abide in his presence, may you abide in the presence of God forever in Jesus' name. And just as Joseph decided to run away from sin, when sin beacons to you, when sin invites you, the grace to run, may God release unto you in Jesus' name. And I pray, just like he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they held on to, to the Lord to the very end. They were ready to die. The grace to hold on to God to the very end. May God give unto you in Jesus' name. And I pray, wherever he leads you, whatever he asks you to do, you will submit to the call of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray for you finally and for every member of your family. God will not kill your enemies. But in their presence, God will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. God will manifest in your life that he alone has the final say. God will humble your enemies. And God will make your victory to be sweet. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you receive this word today and you have not surrendered your life to Jesus, God is calling you. Without Jesus, the enemy will prevail over you. But when you come to him, not only will he bless you, he will bless you in the presence of your enemies. So you want to surrender your life to Jesus? Please say after me, my Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I surrender my life unto you. Please rule in my life. Forgive my sins. Wipe away my iniquities. From today, Lord, take control of my life. And in the presence of my enemies, Father, bless me abundantly. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. As you have prayed, so shall it be in Jesus' name. So please send us your name and your telephone number to the email address on the, on the screen and also send it to us via WhatsApp, the WhatsApp number that is on the screen. Uh, within 24 hours, uh, someone will get in touch with you to pray with you and I will be praying with you from now on and you will soon begin to discover that something has changed in your life. Even your enemies will witness that suddenly a different kind of grace and power is manifesting in your life. That shall be your testimony in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I believe you've been blessed mightily by the word you've received and the message. And if you've been blessed, please, wherever you are, that you are joining us online, via YouTube or Mixer, lift up our pastor in the Lord, Pastor Shekubao, to the Lord, and pray that God will show, we have the final say concerning his life, concerning his family, concerning his wife and his children, and all that concerns him. Equally pray that the, the almighty God will humble his enemies in the mighty name of Jesus. Equally pray that concerning him, by the spirit of Christ Jesus, he will have victory over his enemy, and that victory will be exceedingly sweet in the mighty name of Jesus. Let's equally pray that the Almighty God, by the Holy Spirit, will water him and his wife afresh as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. And that the 
remaining years of their being together will be far better than the latter years in the mighty name of Jesus. And by the Holy Spirit, there will be new beginning in their union and in their home and in their family. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. It's time for us to bring our tithes to the storehouse. It's time for us to bring our tithes to the storehouse. So wherever you are, you prepare your tithes and pray over your tithes. The account number to pay your tithes will be on the screen. And if you are, watching, you are listening to us via Mixer, I'm going to read out the account number. The account number is 101-704-6337. 101-704-6337. I'll read it one more time. 101-704-6337. Zeni Bank. According to the word of God in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9 to 10, it says... Honor the law with your possession and with first fruit of all your increase. Why? So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vase will overflow with new wine. I pray that as you obey the Lord in honoring his word and bringing your tithe to the storehouse, your barns will overflow with plenty in the mighty name of Jesus. And your vows will overflow with new wine in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Father Lord, all who have obeyed your word in bringing their tithe of their increase to your south house. Father, I pray that you bless them with the presence of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord.
Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. It is time to give our offering. Before we go into our offering, shall we open our Bible to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. And it says, Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. As you have come to the presence of God, right even in your home, you will not come empty because our God will not allow you to go back home empty. And I pray as you give, the Almighty God will bless you in Jesus' name. Also, for those who are listening audio that are not watching through YouTube, the account details of offering is on our screen, but I will still read it and it goes... 101-704-6320. I will read it again. 101-704-6320. Zenet Bank. Shall we pray on our offering? Our Most High God, we bless you, we honor you. Father, we thank you for everything you have done. We thank you for this day, O oh Lord that you have kept us alive because you have purpose for us and you have plans for us. Father, as we have come before you, O Lord, this day, with our substance, with the heart of thanksgiving, Father, please accept in Jesus' name. May this offering pave a way for us, O Lord, for all that things, O Lord, we are desiring to have from you. And Father, we pray, O Lord, that your glory shall shine upon us. Even our enemies shall testify before we testify your goodness in our life. Thank you, Lord, because you have answered Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Covenant voices, you can give us your melodious song. Hallelujah. Hey. Even though it seems so hard to move on, everybody around me couldn't help. Could they promise what they would not meet up? Even them, they have their own secret pains. I've been long gone, trusting in men. Though they try, but they all fail. I am man courage, no business. Let me tell you why. I have a father that will never, ever fail me. I have a father that will never, ever fail me. Jesus is my father, he will never, ever fail me. Rock of ages will never ever fail me. Hey, I have a father that will never ever fail me. I have a father that will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father, he will never ever fail me. Rock of ages will never ever fail me. Even though it seems so hard to move on, everybody around me couldn't help. Though they promised what they would not be. Even them, they have their own secret things. I've been long gone, trusting in men. Though they try, but they all fail. I am man courage, no hope is lost. Let me tell you why. I have a father that will never, never fail me. Hey. I have a father that will never, ever fail me. Rock of ages will never ever fail me. Yeah. Rock of ages will never ever fail me. 
Hallelujah. It was a glorious moment to hear the covenant voices with a powerful ministration for our offering. Now it is time for testimony. Some of us may have testimony and they will not know how to go about it. There will be an email displayed on the screen where you can send your testimonies to the church and it will be read out. It doesn't matter the situation. It doesn't matter whether you are the one testifying it. What matters is the ears that heard it and what it does in the life of people. And I pray that you will encourage as many that want God to do a lot in their life with, their, with your testimony in Jesus' name. With me here, we have one testifier. Her name is Sister Folake Adebisi. Her testimony goes thus. I fell into chronic pains few, week, few weeks to delivery. Based on test findings, the baby was to be evacuated before due date. Seven days after the surgery was done, I thank God that I didn't die during the process because I almost did. My blood level became low to sustain me. Liver became enlarged up to my abdomen, up to my abdomen level, and lungs wasn't circulating oxygen to the other organs. I was on life support at the intensive care unit for three weeks. What transpired within the three weeks is, a, is an epistle on its own. But above all, and with a grateful heart, I thank Heavenly Father for making me an overcomer. I also want to thank the pastorate and workers in the vineyard for their prayers and love. May the name of the Lord be praised forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful testimony. Sister, your testimony shall be permanent. The enemy will not turn it around for sorrow. The enemy will not turn it around for mystery. The enemy will not turn it around for something that your enemies will be laughing at you again. The Lord will make it permanent. And this testimony will, will be a point of contact to so many people that are looking forward for God's help. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. We are grateful to God for today's powerful word, and we thank God for today's service. Before we close, just a few announcements. We'd like to remind you of our three services that hold every Sunday. There's a first service at 7.30 a.m. It's the Dew of Heaven service. It's early, it's quick, it's direct, it's fresh, and it's powerful. Our second service holds at 9 a.m. It's the Fountain of Glory. And at this time, we'll be hooking up with um, Pastor E.E. Adeboye, who is our general overseer, to listen to the word of God. It's a service filled with abundant worship, abundant praise, abundant prayer, and abundant celebration. Don't forget also to join us for our third service at 11 a.m. It's the refreshed service. It's relaxed, it's trendy, and it's anointed. God bless you as you participate online in Jesus' name. We'd also like to remind you of our night of word of praise, word and wonders. It holds every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Please do not miss it. This is a time where through praise we bring our tough cases to God. As we all know, Luke 137 says, with God nothing shall be impossible. God bless you as you plan to attend in Jesus' mighty name. Also to remind you to send your testimonies, your suggestions, and your prayer points to our email address. That is thelifegateparish at gmail.com. Thelifegateparish at gmail.com. The email address and the WhatsApp number are currently being displayed on your screen. We are more than willing to hear from you, and we have no doubts that God is still in the business of doing wonders in the lives of his children, even in this season. So please send your testimonies, your suggestions, and even your prayer requests to the email address and to the WhatsApp number on your screen, and we trust that God will do wonders even as you do so in Jesus' name. We'd also like to welcome very special people who are joining us on this online service, and it's those who are worshiping with us for the very first time. We have a welcome address for you from our pastor, Pastor Shegun Bawo, and I'll read that to you just now. It says, welcome home. We've been waiting for you, it's true because we believe that every person who comes into the circle of this special fellowship was sent by God himself. It is not by accident that we have the joy to express Christ's love to you with genuine heartfelt warmth 
We're eager to know you. We're excited to share with you the marvelous ways God is working in our church. It won't take you long to discover that this is truly a family rich in the relationships that matter most. Growing together, we worship, we serve, we laugh, we cry, we learn, and we reach out to our world with life-transforming truth. We reach out to you as well. Our doors are open, our hearts are open too. If you've been thinking, praying, searching, and hoping for a place to belong, we say again, welcome home. God bless you. Father, we thank you for your children who you have brought even into our midst this day. We ask that, Lord, you will establish their feet even in this house in the name of Jesus and that their presence here with us will mark the beginning of glorious things in their lives in Jesus' mighty name. We'd also like to encourage you to invite other people to meet Jesus online. As our pastor has said severally, please be sure to share the link of our messages to your friends and your family. Invite them to experience the power of God even in all our online services. God bless you in Jesus' name. Just before we close, a few reminders. Today, the 26th of July, is a truly special day, at least in my family. Today is the birthday of my beloved wife, Pastor Dolapo, and it's also our wedding anniversary, 24th wedding anniversary. So we just want to thank God for the special thing he's doing. Uh, he has been doing in our lives, and I want to pray specially for my beloved wife. God Almighty, we perfect everything that concerns you. The year is in front of you will be better than the years behind. And everything that you desire for your joy to be full, that and much more, God will grant unto you in Jesus' name. Please join me to appreciate Pastor Dolakwa. God bless you. divine favor in Jesus name. Amen. Also please remember to be active online. The buildings may be closed but the church is open, alive and well. The church is open, alive and, and well. So please join us online on the social media handles on the screen. Go to our Facebook page and click follow. Go to my own Facebook page and also click follow on Pastor Shegun Banwo. Go to our YouTube page. You see a bell on the upper right hand. Please click, click that bell uh, to subscribe. 
And once you do that, it will remind you from time to time whenever there is a new video of a service that is loaded, go to our Instagram page and click follow. Go to our Twitter page and click, and click follow. Jesus is waiting for you online. And as you do, God Almighty will meet you and it will make your joy full in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remember that the fact that the buildings are closed is not an opportunity for you to steal from the Lord. Remember to pay your tithe. The tithe is not yours. It belongs to God. I remember to give your offering. The church remains alive and well. And I pray that you will not rob yourself of the blessings of this season. I want to pray specifically for those, for tithers, those who have been faithful with tithe. You may not fully understand, but the truth is that your Christianity is tested the most by your obedience in the area of tithe. Let me say it one more time. Tithe is a test of your Christianity. A test of your total surrender to God. If you cannot give your money to God, surely you cannot give your life to God. And if the 90% that God has asked you to skip, if it is not enough for you, certainly the 100% will not be enough. And as I always say, it is better to have 90 than to have zero. If you decide to take the 10% that belongs to God, God can decide to take the 90% that he has given you. 90% is better than zero. So if you have been faithful, please rise wherever you are with your tithe. You have been faithful with your tithe. You pay it correctly. You pay it regularly. I just want to pray with you today. Just stand wherever you are. Father, I just want to thank you for your sons and your daughters. And I commit them into your hands, O oh God. And as you have led me to declare to them that tithe is a test of our Christianity. I pray that every one of them that have decided to obey you show your power in their lives in Jesus' name. The full blessing of tight, just as God said, that it will open the windows of heaven and pour you a blessing more than you can receive. May that be your testimony in Jesus' name. And for those of you that have been struggling in this area, may the enemy not rejoice over you. You have been struggling and you want to say, Lord, today... I want to operate in obedience. If that is you, please stand up as well. I want to pray with you. I want to pray for you. I used to struggle many, many years ago with tight. But the moment I surrendered, my life took a different turn. I pray that you too will experience a turnaround as you obey God in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I commit your sons and your daughters into your hands. They have struggled in this area of tight. But I pray that from today, even as they prove to you through their tight, that they truly love you. Please restore to them every blessing that has been lost and give them the grace never to go back to their vomit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are prayed. Amen. Please remember to take photograph of yourself and of your family. If you have not already done so, take the photographs right now. Uh, and send those photographs to us via WhatsApp. The WhatsApp number is on the screen. God is going to use those photographs to encourage many people. Remember the blessing of Moses. God said, I have an assignment for you in Egypt. When Moses went to that assignment, God made Moses the prime minister of his people, the first prime minister of his people. When you do what God is asking you to do, you will return with a testimony. A word is enough for the wise. Go ahead and send those photographs. Also, please remember to go back to the sermon and start listen to the sermon at least two more times because every sermon, you need to listen to it at least three times to get the full message. Even the sermon that I am the one preaching, 
I go back and I listen again and again and again, even to the sermon that I'm the one that preached. Because I'm not the one speaking. It is God that is speaking through me. Again, I encourage you, please go back and listen one more time or two more times. And finally, remember to send the link of this message to all your friends, all your relatives. Uh, you might just be saving a life. God may use this message through you to save a career, to save a marriage, to save a family. As you allow God to use you by forwarding the link of this message, I pray that once again, God will show himself mighty in your life in Jesus' name. Please lift up your hand. Daddy, we just want to thank you for the privilege to gather at your feet today. We thank you for your word of life that even in the presence of our enemies, you will bless us. As you have spoken, so let it be for us in Jesus' name. As we go into this week, I pray that the almighty God will go with you. God almighty will show that he alone has the final say in your life. Everyone that has become a stumbling block in your life, God will humble them before you in the mighty name of Jesus. And God will give you a sweet victory. This week, I pray for you fervently from the bottom of my heart. Something new. Something great. Something mighty. Something that is a pleasant surprise. May God grant unto you in Jesus' name. And in every area of your life that you have been struggling, you have been in pain, you have been in sorrow, may God himself turn things around and make you smile and rejoice in Jesus' name. Every evil in this week, you will have no part in the mighty name of Jesus. You will go out safely, you will come back safely. And when we hear a sound from your house, it shall be the sound of hallelujah. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you. No man can see the end of your grace. No man can know the end of your love. No man can see the end of your glory. No man can know the end of your power. Unlimited God oh. Yeah. Uh -huh.